Welcome to another Saturday Night Live with me, Leon Bartrop, where we answer your questions and queries, the whole community. If you've never been here before, then what happens is we normally run for about 45 minutes to an hour, answering questions for each other in the community, helping each other, and it's just good fun. So if you first time you're here, you want to think about subscribing, hit the bell notification, and you'll get notified every time we go live. We normally go live on a Tuesday. That's normally live from the bank. <coughs> Excuse me. And a Saturday, which is in the man cave. So welcome, guys. I see a few of you are popping in already. Evening Beakfish, Stu Unzi, Joe Brown, Brad Assetier. The usual suspects are here. Brian Mills, three Thieves Like Us, Ben Wallace, Ken Skingley, Amazing Carper, Ock. Ocker Brits, George Anderson, Darren Thompson, and a whole, whole, whole lot more of you. Evening, guys. Thanks for being in here. Now, on Tuesday, we done our record. 185 people at one time. I mean, there were people coming and going, but 185 people were live on the live stream Tuesday from the bank. And last Saturday, we done about 134, 135. So, you know, it's growing. This community is growing. I hope you guys watched Carl G's live feed, which you can watch on playback on his channel. It's all about vlogging and uh, the cameras he uses, the kit he uses. Really interesting stuff, you know. So check that out if you haven't seen it or you weren't in the live feed. It's well worth looking if you're thinking about vlogging or you're just interested to in know what sort of cameras he uses and bits and pieces like a drone and that. So Sam GoPro, good to see you. Darren Holmes, evening. Brian Silver, good to see you in here, mate. Crispy Carper, evening as well. John Stargate, hi, Leon. You've got a turbo lighter, great piece of kit. Yep, if you've been watching my vlogs, every vlog I do on a Monday, I usually include, uh, it's live from the lake. Well, it's not live. It's it, it's a vlog of 48-hour session, me and the old carp dog. And we normally have a bit of kit to show you or, you know, uh, like last time I think it was one of the jet light, jet light, like as well it's as windy it is tonight you need one for blobbing your rigs and things like that so i'm glad you you guys thought that was good mark robinson mark robinson and alfie the labrador carp dog is here good to see you mate evening amazing carper cranky carpers good to see you colin osborne peter marriott nick minter lewis Pugh. oh this is john liffey Hope you're well. Rods are on the dance floor. David Dorgan. I hope you're... Um, David, I don't think you're in this country, though, are you? Well, you might be, but I don't think you are. So, is there anyone mad enough to be out in these gal force gusts tonight? Put, Come on, guys. Tell me if you're out there being a crazy one. Hardcore out there tonight in this wind. And if you are, have you caught anything? Or are you just holding on for dear life? Nathan Leak, North West Carp Fishing. Good to see you as well, mate. David Torrix, evening. Mark Robinson asks, braid or mono mainline? Got to be mono for me, <clears throat> but when I go across to France or Holland, I like to use braided mainline if I'm fishing any distance. Alec McDonald, good to see you. How many have we got in here so far? We've got 85 people already, and we've only been going a few minutes. How about that, eh? That's just testament to you guys in, and the community that we're building. <clears throat> Colin Osborne, he got one of the turbo lights. Said it's a great item. I'll put the... Uh, I think I might have a link there, actually. Let's have a look. Uh, I haven't. I'll find the link, guys. I'll stick it on there. If you haven't seen, you haven't seen it, let me just have a... What I'll do is I'll put the link up in the comment section when the video's done, when the live stream's finished, so you can go back in the video, look at the comment section, and the jet jet lighter will be there. The link for it. So you can go and have a look and even get one. Roy Daniels said he had he had it at the start of the week and it was bad. That was the wind. Derek Smith says no way the bidding would be gone. Oh, I'm feeling you, definitely. I-595 has got the rods out of three, still waiting for a take. I bet you are. Blimey, in this wind. Dominic Carter says, Storm Brian sent by the black chickens. They are evil. I love it. 
Mark Beaver says, Leo, do you use a Wi-Fi card in your Canon 700D DSLR camera? And if so, does it work properly? I don't because they're very temperamental, the old Wi-Fi cards. Uh, I haven't heard very many good things about those ones you get off eBay and Amazon. Some may work, but I don't want to risk it. All I do is, uh, when I take a picture or anything else, I come and just load it straight up to the Mac. Even though I've got Wi-Fi on my 70D, I still take the card out and I load it straight up to my Mac. And I also format the card every time I use it as well. Paul Jarvis says, don't worry, people, it will blow over. Let's hope so. Let's <clears throat> have a look, some of these messages coming in. Dean Wooler says, evening all, looks wet out. I, it definitely is. I live on a hill and it's blowing a hooligan outside. You can probably hear it in a minute. Toby Hollyoak says, Chili Hemp doing wonders today. Had six fish last night and today. Holding on to my bivy tonight. I bet you are, mate. Bloody hell. I can imagine with this wind and that out there. You've got to be crazy if you're out in it. Or hardcore if you're out in it. Tommy Tucker says, this is his saviour. Couldn't get here quick enough. Strictly dancing's on. Can't say much. The Duchess is beside me. <laughs> Well, here's a call out to the Duchess anyway. Lewis Pewters, how do I avoid low-lying weed rig-wise? Uh, fish pop-ups, Lewis. That's what I do. If I've got a little bit of weed. I like to fish in the weed if it's low-lying sometimes. But I fish a, a tall two or three-inch pop-up. Could be good. Or fish a bag, a solid bag in amongst it. Because that's where all the food is. Jason Allen, good to see you. Who else we got in here? Martin Cocker says, Evening, Leon. Bivy heater time. Not just yet, but it's coming, isn't it? There's colder, those colder nights coming, and the clock go, clocks go back, I think, next Sunday, don't they? Ben Wallace says he got the lighter, and he can't wait to get out of the bank tomorrow for 48 hours fishing. Good for you, Ben. Let me know what you think of it. Morgan Evans says, hi, Lil, mate. He's fishing Bird's Green, which I think is in Essex, isn't it? Next week, finally went in a lie. Good for you, Morgan. Dan Williams says, hi, Lil, from Spain. Oh, that, that, why do you have to say things like that, Dan? Hi, Lil, from Spain. On the beer and cocktails, that's even worse, listening to me. God, blimey. He's on the beer and cocktails in Spain, and we're stuck here in the wet and windy weather, and he's, he's living it up. Good for you, Dan. Dominic Cart says, Mrs. B, OK? Yep, she's good. Mark Dean says, send me the link for the multi-shots for my Nikon 5 300. Mark, if you go on to the altometer intervalometer uh, video in the comment section below, in the description below, there's a link there for Nikon, Canon, and Sony, I think, or Pentax. I'm not sure. You'll see them there. Toy887 says he's been fishing the reservoir today and had four hook pulls in a row. Absolute madness. Yeah, that is madness, isn't it? Try lengthening your rig, Teo. Lengthen it by a couple of inches. Adi Delija, who is in Slovenia, says there's no wind. The vaping carpet said, what's the pros and cons to a chod rig, Leon? Good to see you in here, Big Tomo. Right, for me, the chod rig, absolute brilliant rig. Used it before it became sort of more widespread and mainstream. I think the problem with it is now is that where it's been used so much on so many different waters for a number of years, the fish have wised up to it. So you're getting a lot of single bleeps, a lot of, you know, drop fish, uh, fish falling off when you're playing them. So they just know how to deal with it. But when it people stop using it, give it a year or two, three years, then it'll come back into working really really well on the lakes where it hasn't been used for a while it's like any rig the fish get used to using it rooster nail fork good to see you mate paul jarvis says the photo vid was great by the way new gadget ordered good for you paul hope it works out for you that's what i use the old intervalometer can't go wrong with it because you just take your time chill out it's taking 399 shots, or some take 499, and you just take your time because it's taking the shots. You know, set it up right the first time, just 
press OK, go back, put some water on the fish, get them all ready, and it's taking shots all the time. So you don't have to rush. You just go, it might be on your 10th shot, and you go, right, here we go, we're all ready, and it's still taking the shots. So you move about, and it, you know, it just works. Paul Stevens says, I don't got any tips to keep rats away at night. Get a carp dog. Where is he? He's, he's over there somewhere. Get yourself a carp dog, or... Get yourself some traps and put some chocolate. Put some chocolate in the trap and you'll catch hundreds of them at night. They won't be coming back then, will they? Mark Charles is evening, Leon. Late in has picked up his daughter, Kelton, up from work. Shout out to Kelton. Graham Rowland, hi, Leon. Great vid for the use of the Involometer. Very useful. Good to see you in it, Graham, and, and good and glad that you enjoyed the video and took something from it. So all my videos about giving you either entertainment or giving you knowledge, or giving you value of things you can use in your own fishing. Willie Welt Wasson says, had a 19 pound comment on the chod today after 10 blank nights. Good for you, Willie. Shout out to Willie who had one today, 19 pound comment. Big Fish says, have you any idea on how good the Fox FX11 are? Uh, that's the real, isn't it, the FX11? Um, I haven't really seen anyone using them, so I can't really tell you, unless someone on here can give you uh, some uh, some advice. Mark Robinson, braid on mono mainline. Mark, I use mono most of the time, but if I'm going to France or say Holland and I'm fishing over a hundred yards, I like to fish a braid because it gives me a lot more. Especially if I'm using a boat, I like to use it because it gives me a lot more quicker indication. Good evening, Groove and Cat. Dan B says, looking at making my own boilies next week, any recommended ingredients? What I suggest you do, Dan B, is to go on the internet and search boilie making ingredients or boilie recipes. Have a look at what you fancy and just follow one of those recipes. And then just put your own little bits in. Tell like liver you can put in or, you know. You kids, evening, Leon, how's it going? Evening to you as well, guys. Dennis Williams says, thought I would be out testing my new tracker. Now I'm out tomorrow night when it's calmed down a bit. <laughs> but I must say, I've um, I've done a bit more a bit more of an initial look at the tracker Tempest with the skull cap, and I'm rather liking it. So watch out for that on Vlog 6 or 7. So it will be 5 will be on Monday, 6 or 7 will be like the next couple of weeks after that. Hi Matt Wood, good to see you. Darren Thompson says, is my lad into fishing? Not really, he's in uh, the old iPhone and watching YouTube. He'd probably come on here a minute and make a comment. That carp says, do carp hold deeper holes or water as the colder weather kicks in? It all depends. The first initial cold spell that we get, I would say they go to the deeper water. But then because we get a lot of high pressure over the winter, they tend to be in the upper layers. That's why zigs are so good. If I'm fishing the deepest type of lake, I always fish zigs in the winter. If I'm fishing a lake under 10 foot, I look for areas of deeper water that have got shallow parts like bars or humps or plateaus near or an island. Because then, as the fish tend to like, as the day when the sun comes up, they tend to go up in the water onto those warmer areas. No problem, Dan B. Jake Douglas says, is a Canon 750D standard lens good for catch shots? Jake... The factory lens, which is normally an 18 to 55 millimeter, is a good all-round lens. It won't give you the perfect catch shots, but it will do. Depends on how good you want them catch shots to be. Uh, you could always invest in a 50 mil, a nifty 50. They're pretty good, nice and sharp, dedicated prime lens. They're about 100, 120 quid you can pick one of them up for. But as on the whole, as a generally good Lens, I'd say the 18 to 55, which comes with most Canon packages, most Canon, you know, cameras, is a good all-round lens. There is Swinnock. Good evening to you as well, mate. Sean Mulqueen says, "Hi, oh, Leon. Have I had any carp? No, but I'm sure one of the rods is about to go in a minute." <laughs> Here we go. Paul White is going to give you a good little recipe: 50/50 mix to make your own boilies. Nathan Best, Nathaniel Best says, do you prefer helicopter or a lead clip setup? Depends where I'm fishing and what I'm fishing over. If I'm fishing a weedy lake, 
I prefer, as a general rule, a clip system. So I want to get rid of that lead straight away. You can lose fish with that lead getting caught up in the weed. If it's got no weed in it like the park lake, I prefer to fish a helicopter sail. But a safe one. Jet Ski Jimmy says hello from Linear Brazenose 1. You're brave, Jet Ski Jimmy. I hope you're having a few over there with this wind. No problem, that carp. Who else we got in? Darren Swinnock, what's people's favourite shelf life or frozen boilies? There you go, that's a question for you guys. Matt Wood says, what camera would you recommend for a budget? I Personally, I like Canon. So I'd go for something like a 700D or a 650D, something like that. It's going to be about 300 quid. If that's a, you know, if you're on a real, real budget, then uh, I'd use my, my phone. Because they've they got pretty good cameras in them nowadays. No problem, Mark Robinson. Pleasure to give you guys advice. Ian Smith, good to see you, mate. You've finally managed to make it on. There you go. Nathan Link, Northwest Carp Fishing, Sony A6000. They're good cameras. James Green is sitting with his little girl watching us on YouTube. Her name is Bethany. There's a little shout out to Bethany. Jake Douglas says, Sticky Krill or Manila? This time of year, I'd say the Manila. Pete Marriott says, What's up, Leo, from the Carp Pond, Westbury, Wiltshire? Reese Clark says, have you ever used any bait from Active Bait Solutions? Unfortunately, I haven't, but I know Jeff Bowers is the man behind Active Bait Solutions, if I remember rightly, and what he doesn't know about bait is not worth knowing about. Hi, Dave. Good to see you in as well, mate. Danny Boy 26, 26 says, if I wash out my boilies out and don't use them all in a session... Be okay to refreeze them a bucket, mate. Yes, 100%. I refreeze my baits maybe two or three times, especially this time of year. You can get away with it. <clears throat> Mark Beaver says, there's so much choice with cameras, I find it confusing which one to go for. There's a lot of choice out there. I think you have to dive in and just do lots of research on them. And it all comes down to how much you want to spend as well. Most cameras out there nowadays will take a good picture with the right lens on. You won't go far wrong with a, a normal camera that doesn't cost the earth, like a 650D or 700D or a Nikon, with a 50mm lens. You won't go far wrong with that. That's an that's a absolute pin-sharp lens. See, Bruce says, Hi, Leon. Wife says, Where's Barney? He's in the other room with little Frank. But I'm sure... He'll be making an appearance soon. The Vaping Carp says, when would you slow down putting the bait in and fishing singles, Leon? Depends on the lakes that I'm going to fish. Now, I'm putting a little bit in, but I'm still fishing singles as well because they're just not having, they're not having their autumn feed up, which they tend to either do or don't. As it gets colder, it gets below 10 degrees, I tend to go for more singles, like high fluoro pop-ups, or I combine it with like a nice decent bottom bait, and I use particles as well, because they're very dodgy. It's all about the, the digestibility in the winter. Matthew Fletcher says, Hi, Leon. My mate Lloyd was wondering, what is the best rig for fishing over dead sesh dying pads? Matthew... And Lloyd, I would say a pop-up because you want to be above that dying stuff on the bottom, dying pads. Lee Slateford says, any tips on bait that work in various water levels except oils? Mm, you can't, I tell you what I use a lot in the winter, I use groats. And I, I put them in with the hemp that I make, the chilli hemp. And if you've got anything like liquid liver or anything like that, I put it in, it all sucks it in like crazy. I also use something called chili extract, which I believe uh, SSP baits are going to be bringing out very soon. I'm pretty sure you can get it some other place as well. But I put that in with the groats, so it creates a big cloud when you stick it in on the spot. It's good for fishing when you're fishing zigs as well. 
Sergeant Spudgun says a Canon 750 with a Sigma 30mm prime allows for 1.6 crop factor. Yep, 1.6x for on prime lenses on crop cameras. Matt Charles says another great Q and A. Do keep it up. Thanks, guy. Thanks, Matt. It's all about you. Don't forget. 156. I've just looked. 156 people in the house. We've been going. How long have we been going? 20 minutes. 157. So we've beaten our Saturday record of 135 because it's blowing out there. No one's fishing so no Everyone's watching tonight. That's what I reckon. Carpy Stevo says, what sleeping bag do you recommend? There's a few that are really good as it gets colder. I use the Fox uh, on the flat light, flat light uh, which is all zipped in with a cover. You can use the um, Nash Dua, really good one. I'm not sure about the Gardner, the new Gardner Quilt Duvet one. That's meant to be quite warm as well. Any sort of five season decent sleeping bag. No problem, Lee. No problem at all. Evening, Dan Williams. Willie Wasson. Are groats also known as naked oats? I think they're different, but the same sort of thing, if you get my meaning. And they're quite cheap, as a particle goes. Cheers, Richard Watson. He says, great advice, buddy, top man. It's always a pleasure, guys. It's all about you guys. You're the community. Now, I'm answering questions, and people are asking questions, but... You're answering the questions as well, giving advice. That's what it's all about, this big community. Witchwood Morpheus, Danny Gleed says, Brian Silver says, track a big snooze. There's another recommendation for a warm winter bag. Dan B says, his boy has just walked in and said, it's that famous fisherman on your phone, Dad. I'm not famous, I'm just a normal angler like you guys who's just been doing it a long time who's put myself out there to help you to build this community because you're helping me, because you're answering questions. There's loads of stuff there where I, oh, I answer a question, someone else goes, yeah, but try this, and I go, brilliant. Thanks for sharing. Even on the comments on my YouTube videos, someone else will come in with another comment saying, why don't you try this app on your iPhone or something, and I go, brilliant. Thanks for sharing. That's what it's all about. It's all about us sharing our knowledge. It's not about me going, this is what you must buy, this is what you must do, that's not what this community is all about. Chris B says, Hi Leon, any tips on lowering the risk of hook pulls? Had two in a row last session. Brilliant question, Chris B. Now, to me, if I'm getting hook pulls, I lead for my rig by an inch or two inches as a starting point. Try that initially. That will work. DM Dean, DM says, Leon, DPM bed check cover is what you need. Unfortunately, I don't sell them anymore. But they are about the best bed check cover I've ever used. Brian Silver, exactly, he says, all about helping each other. That's what. That's exactly what it is. It's not me saying I'm the best angler in the world, you've got to do this. We're all anglers, we're all helping each other. Good to see you, Carl G. If you miss Carl G's... Live feed earlier on, you can catch up and watch it on his channel, Carl G Northwest of Fishing. It's a great insight into the equipment, the cameras to use for vlogging and taking pictures. And, you know, he's got a drone on there and he goes into it. Well worth a look. Because when I finish this, I'm going to go and watch the rest of it. Adrian Nuttall says, Hi, Leon. Can you still use Megas and Yateley Sanders? I'm pretty sure you can't anymore. Although, and if I'm honest, I don't think you need to on there. You really don't. Brad Esseteer says, but you must buy a black chicken t-shirt. That's what I was going to say, guys. All you guys have bought the black chicken charcoal hoodie. There we go, look. There's the charcoal one. What do you think of it? What do you think of the quality? How soft it is? How spacious it is? What do you think, guys? Do you like it? Hundred and sixty two people, Jason. Yep. Hundred and sixty two people in the house, all watching at the same time. Maxima Fletter says, Where do you go to do sports direct size mugs for us big fellas? <laughs> I wish I could get the people who do mine for me to have some bigger ones. I really do. 
took the mugs look. Oh. Jason Ann says loved he loved his hoodies. Good. William Murray Cole G seems a genuine guy. Definitely, William. Definitely. He's just a normal angler like all of us guys. Wanting to help. Wanting feedback. Wanting to grow the community. Danny Glee's got a green one. Mark Robinson says, Can you put a telly on behind you so that I can watch Strictly and you at the same time, please? No chance. Mark Child says he took Mrs. C out today for lunch, visited two tackle shops and the lake, an expensive lunch. Most definitely, Mark. That cop says he doesn't like too many rig options. A nice bottom bait presentation. Keep it simple. Definitely keep it simple. I've got probably three or four rigs that I use, mainly them, but I'm a bit of a rig person, so I like to try different things. Danny Boy 26 says, what curry do you recommend and have most confidence in? Curry? I reckon uh, I like a korma. Mrs. B makes a wicked korma. Ian Smith says, what's your views on bait boats? Do you own or use one? I've got one. It's about 30 years old. I only use it when I go to France because I'm on holiday. But I do use it in the UK if the lake I'm fishing allows it. And that's just for baiting up when I go. If I'm fishing a lake on a regular basis and I've got to go in the morning and go to work or whatever it is for, then I want to bait up because I like to keep the bait going in the winter. So I use my bait boat. But I haven't used it for a good few years now because most of the lakes I fish can't use a bait boat. Dave Fisher says, can you take the stiff hinge rig anywhere? It depends on the bottom. I mean, if it's heavy weed, it's not really going to work, is it? But over light weed and chod and stuff like that, works a dream. Really good rig. One of my favourites. Colgi says, I wouldn't say Colgi is normal. <laughs> Evening, Mike Payne. Good to see you. Reese Clark says, when is my next France trip? Next May, I'm going. Philip Grimshaw says, does Mrs. B always pack your food for you? If so, where do I get one of those? Philip, she doesn't. I pack all my own food, but she suggests things. She says, well, why don't you try that? Or why don't you try that? She does the shopping. So I say, yeah, get me some of that. Or can you get me that? And, she, and then I get a whole host of things that I want and a whole host of things that I never thought I'd want that I eventually... Like, but she's pretty good on the food front. DM, Dean, DM says, have you got a lucky mascot? It's got to be the carp dog, hasn't it? Got to be the carp dog. Owen Priest says, what do I do as a job? Well, I'm a digital media manager. So and I've got my own business that deals with companies, non-fishing companies and fishing companies doing their media for them, like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that type of stuff, you know, advising, consulting on companies, how they should go about their social media, all that type of thing, you know, photography, product photography, lots of different things. Brian Silver says, will you do a live vlog from France? Most likely, because we've got Wi-Fi there, so I'll probably be doing my live feed while I'm there on the Saturday and the Tuesday. Ben Wallace says, I did my own chili hemp, but from your chili hemp video. Ben Wallace, did you like it? Does it work for you? Darren Thompson says, your vlogs, Leon, how long was it filmed ago? Take it, you film, and then edit uh, your week. About a week behind. About a week to ten days behind, really. I was it just, I just wouldn't be able to do it. Dominic Carter says, on the, on the food front, does Mrs. B have a twin sister on board as well? You wouldn't like her sisters, believe me. She's got more. She's got quite a few sisters. Maximus Lefter says, "Any tips for bite indicators? Looking to get rid of my stows. Um, the signet ones are good, but if you probably wait a six months, you'll be able to see the new summit ones that are going to be coming out, which you're rather going to like. So I've had a bit of input into them, so they're going to be a little bit different to what you're normally used to."
Mark Rom says the only lucky thing his cart dog brings is bad luck. Oh dear. Yeah, you wouldn't like uh, Mrs. B's sisters. I don't like Mrs. B's sisters, so you wouldn't like, you wouldn't like her mum. That's a different matter. She's just like Mrs. B. Knows how to cook and everything. Well, 172 people in the house. Let's have a look at that. Um, here's the link, guys. I'm going to put the link in. Where is it? I'm going to put the link in there. There's the link for a couple of people messaging me about the hoodies. There's the hoodies. There's the link for the hoodies. And what other link did you want? The um, Oh, yes, guys. Did you see? I put in the link for the battery review on YouTube. There you go. There's a couple of people messaged me earlier on about that as well. Who I've just seen come in the live feed. There's the two links, one for the hoodies and the other one for the battery review. What did you think of the battery review, guys, that I did? Did you like that? Ollie Grant says, what chilli hemp do you use? Ollie, I make my own. If you go onto my YouTube channel, you'll see on there there's a whole video about making your own chilli hemp the easy way. No boiling up, just the hot water. Go and have a look at that, Ollie. David Dalton says, wearing your hoodie out here on the River Ebro. Good for you, David. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. Yeah, Ben Wallace says, the video on the chilli hemp that I did, he made his own, it's a good video. Yep, yeah, check it out, guys, if you haven't watched it. Reese Clark says, hopefully I'm joining Darif Big Lag next year. Have you ever fished it? I fished it probably about 30 years ago. Jason Allen says, really comfy. Yep, yeah, those hoodies are really comfy. I mean, I, I can't, I, I get lots of migraines, so I have to wear it. I don't normally wear a hoodie in, in, in the sleeping bag, but those ones I do because it's just nice and soft. <laughs> Terry Brown says where can you buy raw hemp from right Terry there's a few places you can get it from you can get it from C.C. Moore you can get it from Hafes you can get it from um, Hinders of Swindon you can also if you've got a farm shop near you like an animal feed shop that's probably the best place to get that groats any sort of particle any sort of pigeon conditioner and it'd be a lot cheaper It's Noble says, what rod under 40 quid would you recommend? Love your videos and the old carp dog. Under 40 quid. Um, not really too sure. I'm sure there's a few out there. Around about the 50 quid mark. I think the Velocity, the Shimano Velocity, and, and I think there's uh, is the Vader X about 50 quid, and the Fox Warrior. They're about 50 quid. They're pretty good rods. Phil Pippi says, I only sat on the bank, loving this weather. Fing fingers crossed for a corker. Good for you, Phil. You're hardcore, that's for certain. Dean DM says, your carp dog is the laziest dog I've ever seen. Always in the bag. He is until someone comes in the swim or he sees something and he all bets are off. He's like a wild thing. He, he tries to get all his energy up and then he comes out like a, hurting him like a crazy thing. Yeah, we've got 171 people watching. Look at that. That's crazy, isn't it? We beat our Saturday record, 135 last Saturday. Philip Grimshaw says, Can you recommend a good spod rod for under 100 quid? I use uh, one of the Fox Warrior spod rods, I think, and it served me pretty well. But I don't really do that much spotting, only in the winter. There you go. Mr. Kutzi says, Malt Valley Farmers for hemp, 15 quid for 25 kilo. Now, that's a good price, a really good price. <clears throat> it's Noble says, what size rod would you recommend? Uh, the most popular is about the 12-foot version, and you want to be about the three-pound test curve. Depends on if you're fishing a small lake, you won't need the three-pound test curve. But if you're thinking ahead, like you might fish some bigger lakes and want to cast bigger distances, then go up to three to three and a half pounds sort of test curve. 
Dara Thompson says, I already made Mrs. B lunch boxes for sale. I don't know how I'd have a word of her. Dan B says, how do you feel the lid down to find out what you're landing on? It's a bit of trial and error. To me, the harder it is, it's more likely to be gravel. But I normally just pull it back a little bit as well. Uh, and I attach a rig. After I've clicked up to the spot, I attach a rig, pull that through. And normally if you get like chod on it or a bit of clay or you get a bit of weed on it, you can normally tell what you're landing on. There's a nice little tip for you. Del the Anger says, Hi Leon, he's loving his hoodie. Just had curries and he's stuffed. Good for you, Del. And I'm glad you're liking it. Sean Mob Queen, good to see you, Sean. Have you been fishing yet? That's what I want to know, Sean. Have you been fishing yet? you got to get out and go fishing, you have, boy, I tell you. Sean Mob Queen says, Great carp cast, Leon. Makes the train journey a little better. Well, that's good to hear, Sean. No problem, it's noble. Always a pleasure to help. And so, all the other guys in here. Always helping each other. If you haven't been to our closed Facebook group, if you do a search, all one word, it only takes one bite. Get yourself in there because you can post your pictures up, your fish, you can post all your questions up there. We all answer together. It's just a really good, no nonsense, closed Facebook group. I think we've got about 1,500 people in there now. Brian Mills said he had a 17 and a half last night. It went berserk in the water. And on the unlooking mat. Sometimes it just they go like that, don't they? They go mad. Robert Price says done a night last night and a nice twenty five pounder. Good for you, Robert. Maxima Flint Lentka says thinking of using marmite mixed with chili and madras curry powder for a baked dip this winter. What do you reckon? I reckon give it a go. Definitely give it a go. Marmite's got a real good yeast content in it now. Obviously the chili and the curry powder. They're all good. Stuff to put in. Morgan's there. Evan says, you should have a go at river carpet, mate. He fancies it next year. I will do one day. I'll have a little go. Now, Mark Beavers has given a, a recommendation for Spod Rod. Free Spirit CTX Spod Rod. Ian Smith says he's on a syndicate lake where they've made their own makeshift on a fence. But it's nearly time we got the professionals in to erect us a new one. Do you have any contacts? Um, I don't personally. I can probably, probably put you in contact with a few people, Ian. See you soon, David. Thanks for coming, mate. Hopefully, Sean, you'll get out next week. I want you to come on the live feed, Sean Marquina, and say, I went fishing. There you go. There's another good suggestion there, recommendation. Dean DM says, rough coated leads. For texture, for feature finding. Yep, very good. Matt Randall says, have you heard about the new world record? And what's your thoughts? 108 pound, top angling that. It's a fish and someone's caught it at a record weight. Brilliant, you know. It's, uh, I don't even know where it's from. Dave Torrick says, have you, you or anyone seen the Mark 1 New Edwards custom Mark 1's alarms. He likes the old school look. I've seen them. I quite like the look of them. But I don't really know a lot about them. Your kid says, has there been a delay on the release of the new System X, Leon? Uh, I believe there's about a week, 10 days delay. And I'm pretty sure that they've got some in now, I believe. Hopefully. Yeah, Frankie Carpenter says he uses Marmite as a glug. Little sneaky one there, isn't it? The vaping carpet says over it. Yes or no, Leon? Only when it's freezing cold, I use an over it. Dead shot. Tris says hi, Leon. Would you recommend putting in two or three kilos of boilies in, or start slowing it up? Or what water temperature would you think about start slowing it up? Once it gets below ten degrees, I tend to go very light. On the boilies, unless they're highly digestible. It all depends how many fish you've got in the lake. Whether it fishes well in the winter as well. But I use a lot more particles in the winter. Adam Brown says, Hi Leon, I'm looking for a good winter suit. Any ideas on the best ones you have used, if any? I tend to use just a really good jacket. I've got the 40 SJ9 jacket from Snugpack. 
it's as warm as warm could be. You know, you couldn't be any warmer in that. When you use it as a three-layer system, so you have a merino wool base layer, bottoms and the top, which is tight fitting. Then you have like a hoodie, like one of my hoodies or whatever hoodie you got, a pair of joggers, and then I use the the, the SJ9 jacket, and I've had it just over a year now, and I can't fault it, really can't. It's expensive, about 140, 150, but I can't fault it. It's really, it keeps you really, really warm. Maximus Blender says, what's best to thin it out with? You're talking about the Marmite. Try a little bit of um, hemp oil, I'd say. Lee Powell says, he's been looking forward to this all day. I had to take the enemy shopping today, so no fishing for me. The interval of the video was spot on. Glad you liked it, Lee, and I'm glad all you other guys liked it. From the messages I got, it, uh, it helped you a lot. Chris Willett says, couldn't buy a bite of Waverley Valley until the Angler 2 swims up, put us on the Marmite, changed our trip. There you go. There's a good recommendation for using it. Dave Wooler says, have you tried slip, the Slip D rig? I haven't myself. I have. I've been using it the last few trips. I haven't had any joy on it yet, but I'm going to keep on using it when, the, when it dictates. Hi, Lawrence Lancaster. Good to have you in here, mate. Brad Assetier said, what's coming up in the next camera vlog? Um, next camera vlog is probably going to be a couple of weeks' time, and it's probably going to be night photography, because the nights are drawing in now. Yeah, Mark Child says, SJ9 is the dogs, certainly is, mate. Warm as toast, that jacket. Darren Thompson says, do you use a marker flow or just the lead? I just use a lead. Ian Smith, Smith says he's heard a, a rumour of a new tackle company coming and offset from Fox. Do you know anything about this? No, I haven't heard any rumours about that at all, Ian. Paul Martin says, what park lake do you fish? I've fished a few over the years, Paul, but the current one I'm on is the Wellington Country Park. Stephen Thompson says, Leon, how would you fish a low-stocked, very weedy lake where the fish do not show a lot? I spend a lot of time... With a lead, just trying to find those spots within the within the within the weed, and I'll bait those spots even in the winter. Richard Watts says, "Ho, have you ever fished in the Lee Valley, bud?" Yeah, uh, yes, I have. I fished um, the what's that place called? Uh, North Met a couple of times. Didn't really like it, so I didn't really go back. Wasn't my thing, really. Um, Reese Clark says, have you got any new syndicates lined up for next year? I'm hoping to be, I'll be back on the Alien Lake for the spring or summer. I'm not sure yet. And also, the I'll be hopefully getting my ticket back for, um, for the Folly, that lake up in Peterborough. Evening, John gone fishing. 170 people still in the house. How about that? And we're 43 minutes in. Darren Thompson says he agreed with the podcast. We do need something for the kids. I totally agree, Darren. Philip Grimshaw, good to see you, mate. Go and get the kids in. Kids in bed. Thanks for thanks for coming and contributing tonight, mate. Yeah, Brian Silver says he uses his Coleman Petra stove for boiling the kettle and gas stove for cooking. Yeah, that's about what I do as well. Danny Gleed says, Buffalo 6 shirt. Yep, yeah, they're very warm. They're very good. Robert Hammond says, looking to buy some new reels, the new Shimano 1400 XTDs or a good set of second-hand Dower Entols. 550 QDs. I'll probably go for the Dower Entols, perhaps. Although I haven't seen the Shimano 1400 XTDs yet, so... Morgan Emma says, what's the cheapest 1.1 kettle out there? My one's completely battered. Go and have a look on eBay or Amazon. You'll find loads of kettles on there. Cheap ones. K 
Carl G says, which tea bags are the best on Sanders? Well, the best tea bags anywhere. The test, it doesn't matter if it's Sanders or whatever, it's Yorkshire tea bags. 100%. Stephen Thompson says, do you fish anywhere north of Peterborough? Unfortunately, I haven't. I fished Willow Lake once or twice many years ago uh, when I used to do a bit of work for Sticky Baits and Eric's Angling. That's about as far north as I've gone. Yorkshire tea, Dominic Carter. 100%. Mike Payne says, can you do a fish care video? I'm often in such a panic to get the fish back quickly. Don't even take a photo. I know about putting water on them, but how long is safe to keep them out of the water? The thing is, Mike, is to not panic. Not panic. Take your time. Because if you're panicking, that's when accidents happen. Just take your time. They can last out of water for quite a long time. I mean, you want to get them back as quick as you can, but don't panic. Just take your time. Calm them down. Jamie UK 92 says, Leon, do you use a bivy heater in winter? Uh, I have been known to use a bivy heater, but I've got a carp dog. He keeps my legs warm, but I just put my calm on. But be aware, I have ventilation. So I lower the front door so there's some ventilation. I was carbon monoxide poisoning. I Dave says, have you ever fished disruption? No, I haven't, unfortunately. I'd like to fish disruption. Robert Price says, what's the best fish you've caught? The next one. When that buzzer sounds, that's the best fish I've caught. Because I don't know how big it's going to be until I get it in. Or what it looks like or whatever. Never fish monks pit, Dean. Now we're talking. Dave Willard said, what's your favourite biscuit on the bank? It's got to be ginger nuts, I'm afraid. It's got to be ginger nuts, Dean. Darren Thompson says, where can I get my kettle embroidered? Uh, if you look at, or oh, Jamie Smith on Facebook, uh, Carpy Kettles, I think they're called. That's why I had mine done. Chris Willett says, fishing in the lakes in Ringwood? No, but I'd love to have a go down there. Paul White with a really good comment. Wet hands and cool hands before holding fish in winter. Yep, I agree with that. Morgan Emma says, ornamentals, yes or no? Oh, blimey, that's a difficult one. Ornamentals, if I'm fishing in France, I wouldn't mind one of them big 40 pound red things, like the carrot or something. But um, not as a rule. Daniel Gibbard says, hi Leon, just tuned in. Welcome, Daniel. Question for you, have you fished many rivers? Any top tips, particularly in winter? The only time I've fished rivers, Daniel, is when I was a match fisherman. I haven't fished one when I've been actually carping for them properly. So I can't help you. But I would say it's probably the same sort of tactics, really. I think with rivers, you have to find them. Location's the main thing. And keep baiting. Frankie Carper says, hobnobs is his favourite biscuit. Ian Smith says, would you ever think about tutorials? Ian, I used to do tutorials. I loved them. It was just great meeting the guys, you know, and that. But I just don't get the time anymore to do it. I may do it in the future, but with my business and doing the videos and doing these live streams and everything else, I just don't get the time. Lee Slatterford says, I think a vlog on playing fish and setting your clutch would be good. Seen some bad damage to fish on lakes, used to fish this year. I'll try and I'll add that to the list, Lee. That's going to be quite a difficult one to do, though, because I don't catch a lot. <laughs> Dave I says, what bivy do you use yourself in the winter? Well, I use, last couple of winters, I've used the Fox Super Broly with the zip in front and the overwrap, but this year... I treated myself to a Tracker Tempest V2 with the zip in front, with the skull caps. I'm going to be using that this winter. Dean DM says, when you're next on Sanders, Leon, he's doing a social begin November. Uh, I quite possibly, sometime this winter, I'll be, I'll be doing, or maybe sooner.
here we go. Look, there's guys replying to questions and everyone's thanking each other. That's what it's about. That's what this community is about, guys, isn't it? Not just me answering your questions, everyone else giving in their input. It's what a good community. We're building this community. Every live feed we do, we're going up in numbers. 174 people in here now, and that's got to be the record for a Saturday night. 174. It's 185 for Tuesday. So this Tuesday, don't forget, we're going to be live from the bank again. Let's see if we can beat 185. I want to get to 200. That'd be that'd be um, no 176 people in now. George Ann says video on using the clutch would be great. See you later, Billy Mai. Thanks for popping in, mate. Darren Thompson says, "Have you ever fished somewhere you are not allowed? Been fishing a big reservoir that you are not allowed. Never had a problem as of yet, though." <laughs> Darren, when I was a bit younger, I used to poach a few little places. But I haven't for many, many years. It's Noble says, what tips would you give for a young angler? I'd try and get as much information. I'd watch other anglers on your lake, what they're doing. Uh, and just, you know, just do your own thing. There's so much information out there in the internet as well. Dominic Carter says, what's the be best rule? is actually having, having some. Yeah, I agree there, Dominic. John Liver, he's a rich team man himself. Yeah, I've just got a couple more messages coming about the hoodies. Oh, and the um, headgear as well. So I'll put that link out again for those who keep messaging me while I'm on here. There's the hoodies one, and there's for the, the bobolats and the beanies. There you go. There's the bobolats and the beanies one for you. I know I'm sitting here and I'm watching me messages coming up as well. Matthew Noel says, Hi Leon, coming in October, November, do you begin to reduce the amount of free offerings or fish singles like spring and bait on a little off the basis or continue to bait through? I continue to bait through the winter on the right waters. So, and I use a lot of singles. Don't get me wrong in the winter, Matthew, but I like to use a lot of particles. So I'll even fish a single pop-up over particles with chop boilies, but only a couple of handfuls of chop boilies. So like hemp, groats, maize, you know, get it all in there, a couple of spots out, or I may just fish a single if the fish are showing. Yid kids, good to see you, mate. Thanks for coming. Dan B says, as a new carp fisherman, he's loving the Q&A, mate. Thanks to everyone else as well. That's what it's about, Dan B, the whole community helping each other. And if you can get something from it, that's what it's all about. You know, I get something from these. I watch answers and I think, yeah, I'll try that. Or, you know, someone recommends something. Or, you know, I take it all on board. So, you know, thank you for being part of the community and getting involved, guys. Toby Hollyoak says, where are you fishing Tuesday? I'll be back on the park lake. Jake Douglas says, have you ever fished? Day ticket walls under Sanders. I've fished Farlows, Linear Complex. I've fished quite a bit. Hopefully, I'll be having a few trips, a few different places this year. So, this winter. No, Lee, I agree. Lee says, I live on over on a broil. Is it worth it? Not much separation between the layers to stop condensation. Sometimes I get condensation, but not a lot, Lee. A little bit, but I just like the smallness of a 50-inch broil. But this year, we're going for the Tempest. We're going big time. Michael O'Dell says, do I ever use long shank hooks? I have done in the past. I used... B175s are pretty good on a on a uh, just a braided hook link with a longish hair of about an inch and a half to two inches. See you next week, Mark Robinson. You and Alfie the Labrador. Thanks for popping in. It's Noble says, have you ever fished Gigantica? Uh, no, I haven't. Matt Jones says, what's the biggest fish in the park lake? Not too short at the moment. Uh, probably a mid fifty, something like that. I think. Evening, the Obsessive Carver. Good to see you here, mate. John Gone Fishing. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in, mate. 
Dave I, I said, what's your favourite hook link? Um, I use a number of different ones. Amnesia Clear and Black I use. Uh, but I do like the PB Products Jelly Wire. That's a good coated braid. Scuba Scoby says he's fishing Sanders Tuesday. Only takes one bite. Let us know how you get on, mate. Thanks, Stephen Brooks. He says, lovely comment on the Park Lake Vlog. Well in. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Stephen. Well, we're going to wrap it up in about five minutes' time. We get, we've been going for 55 minutes. Seems, seems like it's flown by, hasn't it? So we're going to wrap it up in about four or five minutes time, guys. Don't forget, if you're after one of them hoodies, click that link. Stop messaging me. <laughs> uh, and if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification and you'll get notified every time these come out, these videos and these live feeds. Also, get yourself into our closed Facebook group. With most of these guys you've seen, they're in there already. Do a search, all one word on it, only takes one bite. Sign up for that. Get yourself in there. Brilliant. Alfred the Labrador says, see you next week. Cheers, Mark. Keep on keeping on, Darren Thompson. Got to love the slugs, Lee says. John Wood, good to see you, mate. See you later, Dominic Carter. Hope to see you on Tuesday evening as well. Don't forget, guys, we'll be live from the bank on Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock again. Got a new video coming out, the new part five of the Autumn series coming out Monday. Also, Wednesday, got a video about, blimey, what's it about? Um, God, I can't bloody remember now. We've got a new video coming out Wednesday as well and Friday as well. I think the one Friday is about my five top tips for your rigs, how you can improve them, how, you, how to get better with them and all that type of thing. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, Wednesday's video is about winter carp fishing, how to be successful in the winter, so watch out for that on Wednesday. Right, that's it, guys. I'm going to shoot. Thanks to every single one of you. I really, really appreciate you giving up your Saturday night to come in here and contribute to the community. It's really appreciated. And also, all you guys that subscribe to the channel, all them brilliant comments you put on there, and that you're enjoying it all. And I'll see you all, hopefully, Tuesday for the live. And hopefully you enjoy the next instalment of the Vlog Autumn Vlog 5. It's goodbye from me and the Carp Dog. See you soon, guys. And thanks for um, thanks for everything. See you soon, guys. <laughs>